whiskey jason here whiskey from the viewpoint of an american over here in germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys today i have something from whistle pig wait whistle pig bespoke barrel rye expertly aged in fiji rum cask not in a fiji rum cask not in fiji rum casks but in fiji rum cask um, bottled exclusively for cane and grain, aged in a Fiji. Oh, here we have aged in a Fiji rum cask, 12 years old. All right, whiskey base number 204817. I paid 99 euros for it um, over in Netherlands in Amsterdam by cage, sorry, by cane and grain. Um, it's 111 euros and 40 cents. And I have no idea how many bottles we have. I mean, a rum barrel is usually an ex-bourbon barrel. So we're going to talk about if it's um, only finished for two years, which is often the case here for 12-year-old Whistle Pig. It will be 230-some bottles roundabout. All right, 43%, 111 euros. Way, way too expensive, in my personal opinion. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the history of Whistlepig. At the moment, there's actually a book which I really like to use. Um, no, it's not the book you expect from me. It's the new book. It's called The uh, Spirit of Rye from Carlo De Vito. Great, great book. And um, we actually have here every distillery in America, at least to the point of the writing. Good, we have to go all the way back to the year 2008 when Whistle Pig was conceived by Raj Peter Bakta while he sat around a fire pit. Now, Bakta, he actually attended the um, Hill School in Pennsylvania. Wow, wherever that was. And graduated from Boston College. He started out as an investment um, banking and quickly became an entrepreneurial um, success and created a um, series of very successful companies. This guy was even on The Apprentice with Donald Trump way back when. Now, 2019, Bakta actually um, reached an official agreement and he left the company Whistlepig. So for the last three years, he's had nothing to do with Whistlepig. So the longtime Whistlepig executive, Jeff um, Kozak, an industry insider, is what the book says here, leads the company. And in 2022, he signed a nego he negotiated a major deal with um, Louis Vuitton Monet Hennessey. If you don't know who uh, they are, they own, for example, Artbeg and Glen Morangi. And um, they are now responsible for the distribution of Whistlepig Worldwide, which I think is actually very, very, very nice. Now, this is a small distillery, and we actually had a guy um, that I very, very much um, respect, Dave Pickerel. He actually got involved with the distillery. One of his words was, give me six years and I can create a super premium rye brand. And he did. Super premium Whistlepig. They actually did not start distilling in Vermont until the year 2015. Wow, you start a company um, 2008, 2009, you wait six years before you start distilling. Why? Because everything here is bought from, um, that has an age statement on it, like this does of 10 plus years. It's all bought from Alberta Distillings in Canada. It's very interesting. This bottle here says, Product of, Scot uh, uh, product of Scotland, product of Canada, um, bottled um, by Go America Go Beverage in um, Vermont. So I have a comparison whiskey that I'd like to pull out here. This is the Whistle Pig 12 year old Old World Rye. And it says here, bottled and aged in Canada, uh, Whistle Pig whiskey company in Vermont and so this is going to be my um, whiskey I'd like to compare it to 
Now, this is actually aged for 10 years. Um, it's 100% unmalted, uh, unmalted rye. And I assume this is also 100% unmalted rye. And then for the last two years, they finish in the different casks. So this is 63% um, Madeira casks, 30% Feltan casks, and 9 nope, sorry, I can't read, 7% Port casks, which is very, very good. 111 euros, we're talking about the 12 over here for about 114 euros. Now, my favorite of them all is going to be the 10-year-old. Now, the 10-year-old is 50% alcohol, 43, 43. This is 75 euros over here in um, Europe. And um, this is the pure, um, unadulterated rye whiskey that I love. Now, there's people that go to America all the time, and they say, Jason, what bottle should I bring back? And I say, all right. They say, should I bring back maybe a Pappy, or should I bring back a Stag Junior, or should I bring, bring back a Buffalo Trace antique collection? I said, hey, if you find it for retail, go for it. Buy it. I'll buy it off you for 10 times the amount you paid for it, and it will still be cheaper than secondary market over here. And they just look at me and say, what? I said, yeah, just go to the liquor store. If you want to go buy it, find it. Good luck. And sometimes I send them a nice little link to winesearcher.com and tell, show them the real prices of the products that they think they're going to buy in the States. And I say, hey, go buy an Old Forester 1920. We don't have that in Europe. And then go find Alberta Premium Barrel Proof. They're like, Jason, that's not from America. It's, I say it's from Canada. It's the best rye you might actually get for a great price. Go for the barrel proof. Go for the cast strength. Alberta Premium, absolutely yummy, yummy. And they just kind of go, what, really? I said, you asked for my personal opinion. That's what I'd bring back. All right, so if I didn't have it myself already. Now, um, this is 50%. This is um, ABV. This is 75 euros. This is 43 Whistle pig, Dave, Dave, Dave Pickerel, you can't change it anymore. You unfortunately passed away. But what are we thinking with 43% here for that high price for super premium? Ugh, are people that have money just weaklings and don't want higher proof rise? I don't know. This is actually what I love. This is going to be my, um, my control whiskey, my first calibration whiskey. Hmm. One hundred percent unmalted barley, one hundred percent new um, charred American oak casks. Absolutely beautiful. I really, really, really like this. This is good stuff. Am I willing to pay seventy five euros for it on a regular basis? No. We have other brands. I'm just going to name something called Sagamore Barrel Proof. Um, that's going to be fifty six point um, three, I think. Uh, we're running around 80 euros for that. I would rather pay five euros more and get those six percentage points more and have a very, very nice whiskey instead. Personal opinion, right? Now, this is in a rum cask. Nowhere can I find any information about it being a finish or a full maturation. Assuming um, this is only a two-year-old finish in a Fiji rum cask. All right, that's my assumption here. I may be wrong. Now, on the nose, I really get a nice rye, a little bit more subtle rye moment, and a tiny, tiny little bit of a sweetness, plus a little bit of, I'm just going to use the word brown sugar, sugar cane. That's got to be the rum going in there. All right, this does not wow me. The nose of this makes me happy. The old world rye, as if in the old world they had rye and they put it in Madeira, Sultan, and port casks. But hey, um, Whistle Pig actually has some good people blending there. Fruitier. The Madeira really shines through, I think. Cheers. I actually had the privilege five years ago to get the deconstruction set. set where they had the full maturation port, the full maturation Zoltan, the full maturation Madeira, and then compare it with this. That was actually very, very nice. And Whistlepig, thank you for that. Mm. 
I like this more. This is more complexity than this. This is number one. If I were to rank these one, two, three, shows what I don't like and what I don't like. The Madeira, really nice. But the rye is a tiny little bit more subtle. There's fruitiness. There's a little bit of leather complexity here. We have a little bit more of the rye on the brown sugar and the, um, the sugar cane. Hmm. All right, let's go over here, try this. Also, cheers. Mm. Mm. I did not get the rye on the nose. I'm sorry, I did not get the Fiji rum cask on the nose as a much as much as I get on the palate. There's a tiny little bit of a burnt caramel moment going on here. Almost, they didn't. I don't think they did. Uh, they didn't put any caramel coloring in here, but it's almost as if there's too much caramel coloring. That has to do with that rum cask here. This is pure, unadulterated goodness. Like this. B minus. C plus plus. This um, is not bad at all. It's got more complexity, more leather, more fruitiness. It's going to be a... C++. I like this better. And this is almost a C- in my book. Um, C to C-. minus. It's just not giving me the flavor profile I'm looking for in a rye whiskey. And especially not looking for in a rye whiskey at 110 plus euros. Ah. Alright, so um, first question of the day. What is your favorite whistle pig product? I like the um, the farm crops. I had one, two, and three, and then I had the home crop as well. I, I was actually get those. That was great. Thank you very much, whistle pig, for doing that in Europe. Um, haven't seen anything since. I have not had a boss hog yet. Um, the prices of the boss hogs have always been a little bit restrictive in my ability to buy them. And um, I would like to have some other products from whistle pig as well. I think I've bought like. I have these bottles. I've had the 15-year-old. Um, I've had, as I said, the farm stock one, two, and three, the home. So it's eight, nine bottles I've had so far, Whistle Pig, over here, which is amazing. Many of them I actually had to import over from um, the UK back then. But what's really, really interesting is these bottles are identical in shape and size. And yet some of them say 750, some of them say 700. They're, this is the same thickness even, and I just think they just relabeled them, and maybe, I don't remember if there's a shoulder pour or not, or shoulder um, fill or not, but it's not really, really um, doing anything. This was imported here by uh, Le Maison de Whisky in Paris, and uh, these actually um, don't even have an importer, a, um, a European address on them. Established in Vermont. Don't you just love that? Whistlepig Farm, Quiet Valley Road. Established in Vermont. Not bottled, not distilled, not manufactured, not nothing. Not anything, I know. And here we have hand bottled on the Whistlepig Farm in Shoreham, Vermont. Yay! By bottling it in Vermont, it makes it much better than if it had been bottled in Canada. Yeah, one of my goals in life is to actually help transparency um, become a standard in the whiskey world. At least in American whiskey and Irish whiskey. I'm going to try it in Scotch whiskey as well, but there's Roy and um, Ralphie trying much, much more. Um, I really do wish that we would understand um, where products came from and I really do hope that we would honor products made by a distillery much more than those rectifiers that are just bottling and not actually doing anything to the whiskey. So this is my favorite one. They didn't do anything to it. Good job. Delicious. Here they finished in three different casks. Didn't make it as good. And here they probably finished it, um, in this case, for two years as well. And they rum cask and didn't, they made it even worse. Yay! And they bottled it in Vermont. I like what Whistle Pig is doing. I, in most cases, I do not like that they created a 
I'm going to call it mega super premium uh, category for rye whiskey. If you just look at the Boss Hogs, um, it's just like, why pay $500 for whiskey? It's not worth it. Even now, the 15-year-old is 200 euros. That's mind-boggling expensive. And what did they do? Oh, they took the same stuff they have here and here, and they just put it in casks cut down from trees from the Vermont farm. They have a cooperage making the uh, barrels, and they're storing for an extra year or two on the farm. I, I would expect their own stuff to be more expensive, not the source stuff. But hey, who knows? All right, so that's my question of the day. One. Uh, what rye and rum products go to together well? I can't think of a single one. And number two, which whistle pig um, product do you like and why? All right, so this is Whiskey Jason over here in Germany tasting often rare and exotic whiskeys. Um, apparently a single cask. No word of the word, um, no mention of the word single cask anywhere here. Um, but that's that. And um, 111 euros 50 from Amsterdam made it to Germany. The normal 12, the normal 10, yay. If you're going to buy one, go for the 10. Try it before you buy it, definitely. See you soon, Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.